It has been a while since we have just done a build for the sake of doing a build. But hey, Halo Infinite has a special place in my heart and we needed to celebrate the launch of the game and my departure from the Halo team and Team Xbox after 20 years and it had to be the best way I knew how, with an epic build. So what did we do? We'll find out right now, right here on Robitech. Ten plus hours. Yep, that's how long it took to finish the stream where we did our first ever hard tube end-to-end -end fully custom water-cooled build to celebrate Halo Infinite. Now, I will walk through the parts here in a moment as part of the stream, but this wasn't just a singular effort. In fact, two of us working on Halo Infinite at the time helped turn this stream into reality. So cliche, I know, I know. Meet Mike Romero, the PC lead engineer and a ridiculously talented model builder. We also partnered with him on the Star Wars Kylo Ren build, and more recently, the LTT, or Linus Tech Tips versus Robitech build, where we did the Robotech Rick Hunter Veritech build, which you could and should check out right here. Now, all of these masterpieces were crazy, hand-painted and handcrafted cases that were some of the best builds we have ever done. So I wanted to make sure I gave a special shout out to him for making such an awesome, awesome case. Another big shout out to another unsung hero of the build, Pope, or Pope Art, who's over on Twitter, who helped us with the initial designs and transform this regular 011 Mini into the epic Halo build that we made today. So Mike and Pope, thank you. Finally, and on to our two main sponsors of the build, Razer and EK Waterblocks, who Razer actually got us that special edition Halo Infinite 6900 XT, not to mention those brand new Razer Kunai fans that we used, and also to EK Waterblock, who came in like a boss with all the water cooling parts we needed to finish this whole build out. Zero bends, all fittings. That ends up being pricey, so huge shout out to you. Now enough of all that. Let's get the highlights of the build and check out how this awesome build actually came out. This is AMD Ryzen 9 5900X, the GPU that we're gonna be putting in this, uh, the AMD Radeon 6900 XT, and this is the Halo edition. This is a very rare card. There was only uh, th uh, 117 of these made total. This is the Tough Gaming B550M Plus. We have to do this. Um, and that is the G-Skill Trident Royal Z. So we're gonna be using their CK Fire CUDA 520. We're gonna be using the EVGA 850 GM. These are the uh, Razer Kunai. We're gonna be using these for all the fans. For our block, we're gonna be using the EK Quantum Velocity. This is the CPU water block for our AMD CPU. Two 360 uh, EK water block, SC 360. We'll have to see about clearances. I'm actually pretty sure we're only gonna be able to do one, which is gonna be more than enough cooling. We're gonna be using the EK Quantum Torque fittings. They have customization, so we got some of their gold rings to kind of go around it. We have EK 16 millimeter uh, hard tubing right here, so we've got that basically ready to go. So there's our hard tubing. Uh, we've got their, their 011 Mini distro plate. So we've got some clear EK cryo fuel. But they actually also sent us their cryo fuel die pack, so if we want to make it Cortana blue or gold, etc., we have the option for that as well. So we have a lot of boxes, and all of that is going to go inside of our custom case that we're going to show you in just a few seconds. This was done by Mike, who's a part of my team. So unlike the one that we did with Blue Horse, we did this one ourselves. So there's a lot of like custom fabrication that was very done to this stuff. So adding a lot of these extra bits on the glass, we've actually got the halo that we got uh, Master Chief's helmet plus the 117, uh, plus the kind of the hexes, which are from uh, the forerunners kind of all the way throughout. We're gonna bench everything, make sure it works first. And then once we're done with that, then we'll start putting it inside of the build. For benching, I'm gonna put this on the motherboard box. There's our 5900X. Okay, RAM is in. Okay, let's get our NVMe SSDs in. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and put in our cooler. So we can just verify this whole thing boots, everything works. Throw that into the fan controller there for a second. Okay, cool. Okay, now what we're gonna do is just grab our GPU, make sure our GPU works. That would be super sad if it doesn't. Okay, so we're just gonna jump the board. There we go. Okay, there we go. So build is ready for the next evolution, the next part of this whole thing, which is getting ready for the actual water cooling. Time to put a block in. 
Make sure you remove the peel on the back so the back cold plate's ready. Okay, there we go. It's time to start taking apart our custom uh, case and getting this ready. See, like everything, like even adding like the little, the little bits on this, like there's a lot of just custom work that went into making this case. There's that custom back that, he, that we did. It looks so good. We even weathered this, and that looked cool. Okay, so we're gonna do exhaust out the back. Now we're gonna put our two 140s in the back. Wow, those look good. I'm very happy. Okay, so let's grab our first radiator. Starting to get, starting to get this build all together. All of our cables are now on the other side. Let's get our distro plate installed, which is our kind of our next step. And then from there, we can start hooking stuff up. Go ahead and run our cables and put in our GPU, and then we'll start running tubes. Ugh. There we go. There it is, all of the runs are done. Here we go, guys. This is it. The big, the big moment. Okay, so the build was epic. I would hope you absolutely agree. Parts came together beautifully, but of course the big question is, how does it actually perform? Now before we go into this, if you want us to do more just builds and videos like this, then make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so we know this is the content you want. Also, don't forget to leave us a comment. It could be worth some cash to you. So stay tuned at the end on how to know more. So for thermals in our Lee & Lee 011 Mini using a EK Waterblock custom liquid cooling system to cool a Ryzen 9 5900X, and of course that absolutely stunning AMD Radeon 6900 XT Halo Infinite Edition GPU. So for the CPU sitting at idle, like a grunt sleeping waiting for some action, we saw things sitting at a nice and cool 35 in the open case and an only slightly warmer 37 in the closed case. However, when we turn up the heat, like, you know, the action happening in Big Team Battle over on Halo, we saw things jump up to a slightly warmer but manageable 73 degrees in the open case and only a slightly warmer 77 in the closed case scenario. Definitely zero issues with these temperatures whatsoever, both in idle and under load, so we're good to go there. Now what about that amazing GPU then, Roby? How does it do? Well, for a GPU at idle, like the folks at 343 who are supposed to be updating the game for you right now, you can see things sitting at a nice and cool 30 degrees in the open case and a seven degree jump up to 37 in the closed case scenario. Nothing too surprising here given we aren't water cooling the card, so we're seeing temperatures be pretty normal. Not that it's a big deal we aren't water cooling the card because when we turn up the heat and start working on more MP and single player content, unlike a certain dev team that should be doing the same thing, we see things jump up to a slightly warmer but very manageable 72 in the open case and 
only a one degree warmer 73 in the closed case. So solid temperatures here from the water cooling components from EK Water Block and those new Kunai fans from Razer not only look good, but they also seem to do a great job of managing the airflow and keeping the CPU nice and cool, as well as giving our unwater cool GPU plenty of fresh air. Awesome, Roby, sounds absolutely smashing. So how does that Ryzen 9 5900X and that beautiful Radeon 6900 XT perform in games then? Well, I know you might be asking how does it actually perform in Halo, and to be clear, we already did a whole video on that, which you can check out right here on that 6900 XT and how it performs in Halo. So, in order to make this a bit more broad, why don't we just quickly go through how it handled our standard gauntlet of games. For Tomb Raider running at 1440p with DLSS off and all the other graphic settings set to highest preset, we saw an average frame rate of 168 frames per second across the runs we made on the game. However, we did have AMD Fidelity FX CAS on given this was a Radeon card. Performance was well below that of higher end 3000 series GPUs, but solid enough to play this game for sure. For Metro Exodus, also running at 1440p, running with ray tracing off and everything else maxed out, we saw an average FPS of across all of our runs of 49.22. That is a brutal hit on frame rate, especially with no ray tracing. Very, very heavily optimized game for NVIDIA. Well, Roby, then how about some AMD single player experiences? Fine, that seems fair. Well, first up, it's Dirt 5 running at 1440p with ultra high graphic settings. We saw an average frame rate of 146.8. Definitely seeing that AMD optimization come out as this tops some of those 3080 Ti's and even 3090's. Lastly, in rounding out the single player experiences was Borderlands 3 running at the highest graphical preset. We saw an average FPS of 126.48. You know, I was a little disappointed here as I was hoping for a bigger gap here in performance given we were running at pure team red. Still, good FPS number, but was hoping for something in the 140 frames per second or higher. Okay, nice little Robitech segue here. Just wanted to, to take a moment. One of the reasons that I continue to usually recommend NVIDIA in most cases is because of things where you'll see NVIDIA jumps uh, for optimized games like God of War, uh, even uh, you know uh, Metro Exodus, Cyberpunk will be such a massive performance jump over things like AMD. And even though SFX and those other things are starting to make more mainstay uh, within these games, Again, it's just one of those things that I wish it was a little bit more even. It's not to say I'm, I'm counting them out. I think that AMD will eventually be there. Um, I'm just waiting for those days. Let's go back to our regularly scheduled program. Okay, Roby, so that was great. What about the MP games? Well, for Apex Legends, running on low visual settings at 1440p, optimized for competitive gameplay and high frames per second, we saw an average frame rate of 281 FPS across all of our multiple sessions. That is great FPS and some of the highest we have ever seen. For Call of Duty Warzone, again on low visual settings at 1440p, optimized for competitive FPS and maximizing for frame rate, we saw an average FPS of 260.2. Super solid again, and here again, some of the highest we've seen. Finally, for Fortnite, again at 1440p on low visual settings, set for competitive, you can see us sitting at a very fluid 470.1. It's great, and I'm sure that all of the Fortnite fans are stoked. This is also where it becomes very important when you're choosing a GPU to understand the games you may play. Again, it actually does matter. So if you look at things like usually most mainstream games are gonna be sponsored by Nvidia, but if you know if something is coming out there, it may make sense to go to Team Red. And in the other case of mini MP games, which is where you just want maximum frame rate, this is where choosing one over the other may not matter as much and you can go for pure frame rate. Anyways, that is it folks. What an incredibly fun build to build on the live stream and to do the whole thing end to end was definitely both a marathon and a treat. To be honest, there were definitely times I wanted to quit because the build took a very long time, but I loved being able to show you end to end, including the benching of the system and ensuring it worked before we even stepped into the larger water cooled project. I definitely have some things I want to do to improve doing builds like this in the future, but I felt that this was very successful and I look forward to doing this again on the next one. And guess what? There will be a next one. But what did you guys think about the build? Tell us, and maybe you're gonna win a little cash in the process. First and foremost, you need to leave a quality comment down below. It can be positive or negative, but you also need to make sure that you are liked and subscribed to the channel. That is an absolute must. When I say quality comment, it doesn't need to be positive. It just needs to be something you liked or didn't like about the video. What surprised you, etc. What did you think was the most, the best part of the water cooling 
you name it, just let us know some feedback. Now, it just can't be stuff like, I deserve to win, can I has a free PC, give me free GPU, or something similarly lame or stupid. You also need to ensure we have a way for us to reach you via your YouTube profile, like your email address. In fact, put your email address in the YouTube profile so we can reach out to you because that's how we notify winners. Now we will be giving away $25 to one lucky comment below that is worldwide as long as you can accept PayPal or Venmo. Now did you like the build? What was your favorite part? What was your least favorite part? And did you actually attend the live stream? I would love to know that. Was it cool to come back and see how the finished product ended up? We'd love to know all of that and more down in the comments below. Now while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video right here on Robitech. Did you know we have a live stream channel for special builds and events? Check it out, Robitech Live, down in the description below so you can like and subscribe to know when we go live over there. Do you have questions about this case or any other tech-related questions? Then check out our amazing Discord server filled with other tech and PC enthusiasts that love to share their thoughts and ideas on these very subjects. Are you looking for cheap tech? Maybe want to know when GPUs are in stock? Then check out at robitechdeals.com or at robitechdeals on Twitter. We have our guy Tom scouring the internet for the best deals on all things tech from PC components to games to TVs. Finally, you can also follow me and my team on all the other socials at Robitech everywhere. We hope you absolutely enjoy this video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.